Hello, my friends. Dennis Gebhardt here with Guru Nation. And um, seems like it's time for us to have another little conversation. And so today I wanted to spend a few minutes with you, uh, as always, discussing some of the issues that we deal with in the world of hair color. Uh, you know, my phone has been blowing up over the last couple of days with all uh, these different claims that are out there on social media and way too many for me to focus on in one session. So in this session, I just want to take a few minutes and I want to talk about something that <clears throat> has been around for a long time. Um, there's a lot of misunderstandings, a lot of misconceptions about it. So today I want to share with you some information, some factual information. So you'll be able to put this in your book of knowledge, uh, but also some things that may shake up your belief system just a little bit. So today I want to talk about organic hair color. You know, the word organic has been thrown about over the last quite a few years, and it has almost gone outside the area of its actual definition of what it is. And so uh, today I wanna talk about how it's used when we promote hair color brands, because there's many brands out there today that are claiming to be organic or they're claiming to be certified organic ingredients. And so I just wanna talk a little bit about what actually is in those products. Now, before I start this, of course, I want you to understand that as human beings, our beliefs create our reality, meaning that I'm not here to slam anybody's brand or anybody's product. I'm not here to tell you, you know, what you've been leaving is, is uh, not accurate. Uh, I'm just gonna present the facts for you and let you make an informed decision. Does that sound fair? If it does, let's begin. So first of all, let's talk about what is organic hair color? You know, that's a big word. What does that really mean? In the professional beauty industry, the term organic hair color simply refers to hair color that's made with organic botanicals and less chemicals. So it's not totally organic, but it has some organic ingredients. Organic in this sense is the same definition that we use for organic food. There's the standards for that. Organic foods are uh, categorized as uh, botanicals that are grown without the use of pesticides. When most people refer to organic hair color, they're referring to professional organic hair color brands formulated with the least amount of synthetic chemicals and a maximum amount of organic botanicals. So even though we call it organic and some of us are led to believe it's 100% natural, it's not. It still has to have some chemical basis or foundation because very simply, that's how the hair color process works. Um, here's the thing to keep in mind is that at this time, you know, when you ask yourself, does 100% organic hair color exist? The answer is no. At this time, professional organic hair colors must contain a certain percentage of synthetic ingredients to work consistently and effectively. That means there's certain chemicals that have to be into, into in a hair color because a hair color process is a chemical process. But it doesn't mean you can't find a color line that uses a maximum amount of organic ingredients and a least amount of chemicals. That's true. Uh, there are many lines that have started introducing organic ingredients into their product uh, so that they could make those claims because you know, society is really you know, looking for or trying to achieve a 100% uh, natural hair color. The only 100% natural hair color, and this is something to keep in mind, currently and has been for many, many years, is a product called henna. And here's the thing I think you're gonna find interesting about henna, and I'm gonna bring this up a little bit. I'm gonna shrink myself down here uh, because I can do that. I'm gonna shrink myself down and put myself down here in the corner. And then I'm gonna bring the slide up to full. And that way, and I think I'll move myself over here. How's that? Okay. <laughs> so here's the thing to remember about henna. Lawson, Lawson, 
which uh, that's the chemical name for it, 2-hydroxy, 1,4-napathoquinone, whatever, uh, is also known as henotanic acid. It's a red-orange dye present in leaves of henna plant. So henna, true henna, is orange. Uh, there is no mahogany hennas, there's no brown hennas, there's no black hennas. In order for them to achieve that, they introduce soluble metals into the mixture. Um, what's important is to think about the content that it has, which is lawson. Now, when we apply henna to the hair, for many of us, we assume henna is a coating product. And that's what we've always been told. But here's really what happens. The lawson, it will actually bind with the keratin in the hair. And that is the reason that it's very difficult to do what we call remove henna from the hair fiber. Um, and that's why many people have challenges with it. And then of course you add to that, if it has a specific color, that even makes it worse. So this is exactly how henna works in the hair. And I think it's important to keep that in mind when we're thinking about uh, working with uh, natural hair color because it is the only natural hair color currently that exists that is 100% natural minus when they add chemical solutions to it like soluble metals. Here's what's important to note. Using henna on the hair isn't always suitable for, a gay, for gray coverage because sometimes in order to give you a henna shade that will give you coverage of gray, they add in metallic salts. Once metallic salts are embedded in the hair and you try to do a chemical process over the top of them, you can create a chemical reaction. So you have to keep that in mind when you're working over products like henna. So does organic hair color work? I mean, that's a great question, isn't it? Uh, and here's what the answer is. Here's what the experts say. No, professional organic hair color uh, hair color brand is 100% natural. Any organic hair color product will contain certain amounts of chemicals necessary to perform. When searching for an organic hair color company, what you need to ask about is percentages. So you need to check with the, the people who know their product and ask them, you know, what are the percentages of PPDs that are in this product? How much uh, ethanolamine or ammonium hydroxide do you have in this? Uh, are there how much how, how big a percentage of organic ingredients do you have? Meaning botanicals only. Um, are there any natural ingredients in it? And what percentage of those are any naturally derived ingredients? Now, once you've determined the percentages of these components, then you can make a better decision on which organic hair color is going to work for you. But here's the reality. Can we talk <laughs> for just a minute? Okay, first of all, you have to have a sales representative that knows how many, the, the amount or the percentage of PPD that's used in the hair color brand. They have to know how much ethanolamine, whether it is ethanolamine or whether it's ammonium hydroxide or whether it's paratoluene, they have to know all of this. Now, do you really think the sales rep number one even knows? Do you think that an educator even knows? Do you know how many educators don't even know the pH the processing pH of their brand of color that they teach for. And do you think a manufacturer is gonna tell you precisely the percentages? The answer is probably not. And on top of that, if you get someone who's honest with you and they tell you the percentages, how do you know? You don't have the devices to verify that, to validate it. So it's really word salad exactly what it is. That doesn't make organic hair color bad. It just means you need to know what you're using. Those things are very, very important. In fact, because many of us think it's safer. In fact, not only is organic hair dye not necessarily safer, it's not, because some natural ingredients are toxic, okay? It's not necessarily safer than synthetic hair dye, but organic hair dye simply doesn't exist. 
other than henna, as we said before. Any commercially available hair dye, store-bought or for home use or found in salons uses chemical actives for them to work. The fact is, there is not really an answer to whether organic hair color is better. It may have fewer harsh chemicals, making it safer for prolonged use, but it may result in less vividness and longevity depending on the type you are using. So there's a downside to using brands that claim to be 100% organic or 100% natural. So can you see how in this industry, it's a marketing story lots of times, like we're organic. Do we have organic ingredients? Yes, so we can say that we have organic ingredients in our hair color. It doesn't mean the hair color is 100% natural. It doesn't mean that your clients can, you can use that color on your clients and they won't have some sort of a reaction to the ingredients that are in the product. So we have to find a balance. We have to find a balance. And so you have to understand is that it's a, it's a marketing terminology that is used today that actually has nothing really to do with hair color, but we use it because we know that people are drawn to it. In fact, here's what the experts say. Companies who sell organic hair dyes do use organic ingredients. That's true. But those ingredients are just an extra, what they call extra bells and whistles. The industry calls these fairy dust ingredients because here's the reality. It's gonna blow your mind. <clears throat> they have no impact on the color outcome. No impact at all. So if you have quinoa, it doesn't have any impact on the color outcome. You know, if you have um, marigold, no impact on the color outcome. If you have radish root, no impact on the outcome. Get it? Hear what I'm saying? Okay. They are, they are used to draw the buyer in and let them believe that the product is safer when these are all inactive ingredients. That's what they're considered. They're considered um, enhancements. The, many of you have been to my classes. You've heard me say this before. It's an enhancement. It's something that <coughs> we are attracted to. Okay, so they're actually inactive ingredients. The product will perform the same with or without those special natural ingredients in them. They do not affect the outcome of the color service. Now, I know that this is very hard for some of you who are purists to believe, but I'm just telling you the facts and I'll let you make the informed decision. Sorry, natural hair color doesn't exist, at least not in what we call the traditional sense. The only natural hair dye that exists is based on henna. We talked about this already. That can be blended into natural shades of brown and reddish colors. But there's a reason why stylists often suggest avoiding henna, even if it's one of the more natural options. Once you've applied it, it's in there. Keep in mind, remember, it binds with the keratin in the hair. Keep in mind, if you want to dye your hair later, it may be difficult to go lighter in color. And it's very hard to lift out of your hair. And it should also be noticed that hair will not lift with bleach easily after using henna. Why? Because Lawson binds with the keratin. So if you're going to lighten the hair that has henna on it, you're going to have to create some sort of breakdown of the keratin that's in the hair fiber. Why isn't conventional hair color organic? I, we always ask this, why? We've been doing hair color for a hundred years. Why is this, why have we not moved on to that new technology? Here's why. It's one thing to understand that your hair dye is full of inorganic ingredients. It's another thing to understand why it matters and that it's not a bad thing. Conventional hair color needs four ingredients to work. Let me repeat. It needs four ingredients to work. First one, oxidative dyes to color the hair. You got to have uh, oxidative dyes in order for them to develop in the structure of the hair in a permanent hair color process. Next, it needs antioxidants, which we've talked about this before. 
serve to keep the dyes from reacting before they're used. So it keeps the dye its integrity. Number three, we have to have, have an alkalizer like ammonia or MEA or amino methylpropanol or any sort of an alkalizer because that creates the environment and allows peroxide to release oxygen and carry in the dye intermediates and create a color molecule, blah, 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 blah. And finally, we have to have hydrogen peroxide. I'm sorry, because the one thing that has not changed in a hundred years is the hair. It's still the same chemical structure, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, and sulfur. Okay, so it is still the same chemical structure, has not changed. And that's why we require these chemical substances in order for us to break down the chemical bonds in the hair and change the color of the hair. The other ingredients that are used in a hair color product are simply used to make the base. They make it creamy, they make it into a gel, you know, that, that's everything. They're used as surfactants, which help to carry the product into the hair, uh, but they don't actually color the hair. The four things that actually work in the color process are the ones that you see printed right up here in red. Remember what organic actually means beyond its marketing appeal, okay? Organic is a term used to define a farming practice prior to cultivation of a plant. The dyes are synthesized from petroleum, petrochemical origin. So they, the term organic wouldn't even apply to anyone's dyes because they are petrochemical. So we use a word that has no relevance in our business. That is a fact. Is hair dye still safe? Of course it is. According to the Federal Food and Drug and Cosmetic Act, color additives must be approved by the Food and Drug Administration before they are used on cosmetic, in cosmetic products, including the dye. Many more studies have been done on hair colorants than botanical extracts. So, you know, they're not, they've not done that many studies on botanicals, which we all seem to put our faith in, but they've done thousands of studies on hair colorants. Make sure you are routinely patch testing for allergies. You can, you can rest assured knowing you are safe. The two most common hair dye ingredients that purists, that's the people who are into organics, try to avoid are ammonia and paraphenylene diamine or PPD, which is often found in most dark brown or black shades and has shown a correlation to rare allergic reactions. I wanna talk about correlation versus causation. Correlation means there's some sort of a thread that connects the ingredient to a, an allergic reaction. Causation means that the ingredient is directly implicated in an allergic reaction. So you have to be really careful because there are many correlations, consequences, uh, lots of correlations that will happen with different ingredients. But unless there's a direct causation that you cannot implicate that ingredient 100% of the time and say how bad that it is. And that's what we are in today with hair color. We have what we call ingredient poachers. They are the ones who go through, they pick out one ingredient and they're gonna tell the whole world how bad it is. So it allows them to shine a light on their ingredient and increase its legitimacy against the one that they're playing down. That, that's what marketing is, that's what sales is. <clears throat> the only way to know that you are allergic to PPD or PPDA is to have a reaction, which is why a skin patch test 24 hours for application is usually a great idea, especially if you've been prone to contact dermatitis or other skin conditions in the past. How many of you actually do a patch test? Come on, come on, come on, pass up. <laughs> I know, I can see you. I can hear your little voice right now going, holy crap. 
I don't do patch tests before I do a color. They come in, they want a color. I go sit down and I slap that color on their head. So who's responsible at that point? You know, here's the things we should do. It's called, it's called best practices. But the things that we should do are not always the things that we do do. And that is why many times we run into problems. Hair dye can be made as clean as possible, but there has to be certain ingredients that we cannot avoid. So how you doing? I want to put this guy back up on my shoulder and I'm going to grow myself and I'm going to come over here. All right. How you guys doing? This is important stuff. And it's real. It's not somebody's opinion. It's not somebody's assumption. It's not somebody's, you know, story that they came up with. This is facts. This is exactly what happens. This is this is when we use when we use terminology in our business to sell a product and it has no relevance to that product, we create what we call the love story. None of us want to think we're using products that are harmful. And we're not, as long as you're using them properly. And can we get, do we have better ingredients than some of our hair color brands today? We certainly do. But please understand that the word organic is taken out of context and used to promote a chemical product as opposed to its original definition. It's like the word toxic, you know? Is it a toxic product? Well, toxicity, if you Google it, really has nothing to do with the chemical service. I mean, we say that we detoxify the hair <laughs> and toxins don't build up in the hair. A toxin doesn't build up in the hair. Toxins build up in your body. And so you can detoxify your body, but the hair is a dead fibrous appendage of the human body. So hopefully you're doing okay. Hopefully it's all right with you. Hopefully you picked up some nuggets from my little conversation today. If you wanna know more, if you wanna take a deep dive, I invite you to come to Hair Color School our upcoming program, Summer School, starts June 5th. It is up on our website, and uh, you can go on there, get the details of all four sessions. It's a 30-day program. We have three coaches who work with you. You're on a messaging service with them 24-7. If you want to take a deep dive into the world of hair color, if you really want to achieve mastery, I encourage you to come and spend some time with us at Hair Color School or come and play in our sandbox. Uh, so you can go, follow us on our website and uh, you can go on there and find out about Hair Color School Summer Session. Remember, it's a um, smaller class. We take a limited amount of people and that way we can give you more of a one-on-one -on -one, um, relationship. And of course, everyone who's wanting to know about my body, I just, uh, my book, <laughs> my body, my book, I just talked to my publisher today. The book is in, um, it's not in formatting, it's in page something, I forget what it's in, but the pages are being formatted. They're gonna send me that uh, for my approval. And then we're on to uh, cover designs already done. We're on to binding and production. So should not be long. Uh, they have told me that we can start accepting advance orders April 1st. They will pop, They will be on our website. If you go to our website and look for this picture, uh, you can make an advance order. Um, we're going to do signed copies off the website. So uh, be sure you check that out starting April 1st. Also, <clears throat> Guru uh, Nation is going to be doing some on-location on programs this year. So we're waiting to get those on the calendar. And as soon as we do, uh, we will let you know. Uh, I'm doing a tour here in the West Coast uh, starting in June. We're going to be in Orange County. We're going to be in San Diego. We're going to be up in Northern California. 
we're going to be in Las Vegas and we're going to be in Arizona. So it's sort of a West Coast tour. Uh, I'll be sure to post those uh, when they come up and uh, let you know. I'd love to see you at one of those events. I'll be working with the infamous Rebecca Taylor, uh, with uh, Juan Carlos for hair out of Las Vegas, Nevada, and the amazing Nick Flyer, hair designer. So I think it's really, and oh, I'm so sorry. And also Sally Rogerson is doing a program with us uh, in, on that tour. So we have some really great people that will be uh, sharing their educational knowledge with you. So be sure you show up for that and check it out. It's going to be fun. Uh, we're doing that with the people at Formula 18. So we're very excited about that. And finally, if you are watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for doing that. We invite you to be sure to subscribe by just clicking down below. If you click the bell down below this video, uh, you'll get notified every time a new video drops. And uh, we, we thank you so much for following us and for uh, your comments. We get wonderful comments, wonderful responses to the programs that we've been doing. You can find us on Facebook. You can find Guru Nation, which is a company page. You can also join Guru Hair Tribe, which is a private, non-branded Facebook forum. Uh, just go on there and, and apply, and we can get you in there. We have lots of people who belong to that forum who are willing to help you improve your color knowledge and your confidence in hair coloring. Our website is right here at www.gurunation.net. Uh, some people do not uh, clear their cookies or clean their caches on their devices. And when they try to log on, they have a hard time going to our educational page. If you have that challenge, if you write here in Instagram, if you're watching this on Instagram, if you go to my bio and you see the link tree connection, tap on that. It will take you directly to my educational page. Uh, so I invite you to follow me on Instagram. It's at Real Captain Color. My team members, uh, Max Masanio. Uh, you can follow Max at Max M Hair. Yvette Frontani from Chicago. You can follow Yvette at Yvette underscore Frontani. And Erica Blancet, who is an amazing, talented hairdresser right here in SoCal area. Uh, you can follow her at Erica Blancet. Um so that's pretty much everything. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. I truly do appreciate it. And as always, I say from my heart to you, I'm Captain Color. I'm out. You guys have an amazing day and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye now.